Hello everybody, welcome to another Tasmania Museum and Art Gallery Facebook tour. My name is Kate Morris and I'm here today with Scott Carlin, manager of House Museums. Hello Scott. Hello Kate. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Um, before nice. we go any further, would you like to start our session today? Yes, I'd like to acknowledge the, um, the Narina Sands and the lands of the Muanina people, um, one of Tasmania's first nations groups who did not survive colonisation and uh, I acknowledge the Tasmanian Aboriginal community as the ongoing custodians of the land. Thank you, Scott. So we're here today at this beautiful house called Narina uh, that Scott and his team look after. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit more about where we are, Scott? Where actually are we? Well, we're in Battery Point. <clears throat> so Narina is um, one of the earliest houses um, surviving in this fantastic uh, precinct, which was preserved during the 1960s by the, um, the efforts of the Battery Point community who wanted to see um, the Battery Point uh, um, built environment survive. So it was, it was not a green ban, but it was um, actually a, a planning scheme that ensured that the, um, that the new developments were sympathetic to, to the old. Oh, interesting. Really? Yeah. Should we start to make our way towards the, the front door? Yes, to move away from traffic noise. Let's go this way. Oh, thank you. And I can see that there's, everyone's very busy gardening, so you've got a team of volunteers who... Yes, we've got the most fantastic volunteer group, including Michelle, who's, <laughs> um, who's came up with the concept of this lovely parterre around the fountain. It is beautiful. Yeah, and it's a lovely winter's day here in Hobart as well. It is. Yeah, perfect. Mm. So it's very grand as a facade. It is, yes. It's, um, it's a house designed to conjure up the sense of a Greek temple, actually. So we've got a frieze and we've got pilasters and we've got a plinth. So yeah, very classically designed. Mm, of course, mm. it's a stone front and, and uh, brick sides. So it's a house that's presenting uh, you know, the sense of its owner being landed gentry. It was a real sign of you know, arrival in Battery Point for Captain Haig, who built the house. And when did he build it? Um, the house, uh, house was built from 1835 or so to 1840. Right, yes. so it's quite a long time, five year build. Yeah, yeah, Captain Haig, who built the house, we'll have a look at his portrait okay. here. Mm. This, is, uh, this is Captain Haig. So, um, so he was a, a merchant, he was a shipbuilder, he was a whaler, so involved in, very much in um, the commercial life of Hobart. He did passengers, services to other ports, and also he, um, uh, he built two of Salamanca Place's first warehouses. So they were at the far end of this block. His warehouses are still there today, they're now Jack Green and Cargo. Oh, that's interesting. So he's, yeah. he was a significant person in the sort of early colonial days of he was, yeah. Hobart. Yeah, yeah. yeah, interesting. Financially, he was very thinly spread. And when the Bank of Australasia crashed in the 1840s, he was one of the few Tasmanian casualties of Australia's first Great Depression. Ah, yeah. okay. So. There's so much to know about here, isn't there? But um, yeah, there is so much to see. What would you like to actually show us today, Scott? Well, we did an awful lot of um, work on the property during the lockdown, um, thanks to funding from the Tasmanian government, the federal government, and uh, the Tasmanian Community Fund. Um, so we did heaps of work. We got all the, the windows repainted. We we replaced decaying stonework, we repaired roofs, we did all of that sort of thing. But one project that we did that I'd like to take you through is um, telling more of the story of the convict servants who lived at Narina during the time of the Hagues. Um, and this has a personal connection for me for, yeah. because when I first came to Narina as a museum study student, uh, I, was being, I was then based at Port Arthur and I was doing an internship there. And I stepped through the door and they were obviously quite surprised to see a young man coming into Narina. And uh, I was then grilled about why I was coming to see the house, as if I was a thief or something. <laughs> and, and then when Port Arthur was mentioned, I was told in no uncertain terms that Narina was, had nothing to do with uh, Tasmania's convict history. It was all about the free settlers. And if you look at the plaque here, you'll see that um, Narina was set up as a memorial to the free settlers. Um, so you've certainly sort of changed that now, as you were yes, just saying, yeah. that you've been focusing on the, the convict history on the con of, of this yeah. place. Yeah. So, I mean, we, um, when Narina was first a museum, it was very much um, 
a venue for changing exhibitions. You know, it was a, it was a social history museum. It was like a historical society type museum. Mm -hmm. And today we're wanting, wanting to actually tell more of the story of the house and to integrate the Hagues and other occupants into the story. So we've changed the focus of the, the museum so that it, it's really, so that the collection and the building sort of sing from the same song sheet and, and tell mm. more of a people's story. So when I was first in Tassie in 2012, I was researching Captain Haig and the identities of about 14 convict women popped up through the lists of people listed in newspaper, um, uh, newspaper you know, detailing of a convict assignment uh, uh -huh. that these women were being assigned to Captain Haig. So that story came out and of course we've got fantastic convict um, quarters here. The house is fantastically intact as a Tasmanian colonial house so we can tell the story of the convicts quite well and through a Copeland Foundation grant we've been able to put back some of the missing elements in mm. and tell the story even better. Should we go and have a look? Yeah. Maybe we can have a look at a few things so we've got these formal rooms. Yeah formal rooms either side. Yep and this painting yeah. looks interesting. Mm. The drawing room there. Yes, a, a painting of Captain Haig's ship, the Sir John Ray Reed. And then we'll move straight down the hall to um, to come into the convict, um, into the servants' quarters, the servants' areas. So I notice we're going down a level. We're going down a level, yes, um, physically and socially. Okay. <laughs> So it's fairly intentional. Yeah, I think so, mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. Narina um, is perhaps a little unusual in that it always had its kitchen wing attached to the house. So we've got the kitchen just through here. And then, um, so that's where convict women would have worked most uh, yes. every day, basically. Yeah. Um, something that we put back during the recent lockdown is this cellar, which is Ooh. under one of the rooms of the house. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the, cellar, the, the f cellar was completely hidden by flooring and a desk. So um, we actually rediscovered it when the NBN was connected to the house just a couple of years ago. So it's a fantastic space and it's all about, you know, keeping food and drink um, refrigerated, basically. Yes, yeah. Can so you visit, can one visit there? Yeah, visit absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, have we got time today? Well, yeah, pop down. Let's go. <laughs> you right there, Veronica? Wow! Yeah, well, so that's the, exciting. <laughs> so the head height's not great. No, no, I'm no. not very tall. I can just about stand up, actually. But you can see it's whitewashed, you know, and whitewash was used as a um, antiseptic sort of treatments yeah and um, we've just got a barrel trestle and uh, a couple yeah. of barrels sitting here and no one knew it was here for a while no uh, not for years no, how exciting these big holes have been bashed through to um, link up the electricals the house okay. was um, electrified in 1904 or so so quite early in fact yeah quite mm, early in the history of and then the pile of rubble behind you oh is um, from a later phase of the house's life. The house was bought by the Tasmanian government in 1946 to be a hostel for women with tuberculosis. And at that point, they took out all of the fireplaces downstairs and replaced them with brick and tile Art Deco sort of numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, and then of course, from 19, the museum was founded in 1955. And as part of the 1950s restoration, they took out the 1940s Art Deco fireplaces and, and put back in mantelpieces from other Tasmanian 19th century houses. So Fantastic. that's the pile of rubble from the, oh. the changeover in the, in the right. 50s. It's amazing how many stories a building can tell, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, so many layers. It's fascinating, loads. yeah. I think it's fascinating too that Narina came into public ownership as a result of a pandemic, yes, you know, tuberculosis. Yeah. <laughs> indeed. And uh, yeah. here we are again. Here we are again, yes. Yeah, dealing with a more serious one, I think. Yes, yeah. Anyway, beautiful right. original door. Beautiful original door. So we'll head back up again. Thank you. And 
And should I head up these? I'll just wait. <laughs> Can we go up these stairs? Yes. Scott, these uh, look interesting. <laughs> yes, these are the servant stairs. Ah. So the main stairs are nice and wide and gracious. Yes. And these are the These are quite stairs. narrow, indeed. So you can just you just have to imagine yourself carrying up a bucket of coal. Oh gosh. Or bringing a down heavy a heavy bucket of coal. Yes. Bringing down a chamber pot. Perhaps. Oh yes. Lovely. You'd want to do that quite carefully. I think so. <laughs> it's very light, isn't it? The light's very good in these rooms. Like, there's a lot of yeah, well, it's got this lovely skylight, yeah, yeah. which is such a feature of Tasmanian houses. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't mm. know that. Mm. Oh, it's cosy. It is. Mm. It would have been quite cosy in the 19th century because this is above the kitchen. So the kitchen half would have been going 365 days a year. Yep. And they're cooking meals for the family and the servants. Right. Because um, it is quite fresh today. It is, yes. yes. So it so probably the, would have been a lot warmer than this. It would have been mm. warmer, yeah. Mm. In fact, mm. um, being assigned to a private family was a good gig for convict women. You know, it, I mean, we, many people visit the Cascade Female Factory in South Hobart. Yes. You know, they would have been you know, extremely cold up mm. there, mm. unless, of course, they were working with the, um, the hot water in the, in the laundry, in the laundry. That was, yeah. which the female factory was set up to to do you know basically mm. it was an industrial laundry so with the servants that were assigned did mrs haig choose those servants or how did that no work? she could choose to return servants but they were basically well they could select the servants at the at the wharf so where mac one is today yes. they could go down there and select convicts to be assigned to the family um, but that was based on appearances and based on the testimony of the women. Quite often, the women coming to Tasmania as convicts would say that they were domestic servants. Mrs. Haig would then get them, bring them here. She'd, she'd quickly work out who had experience of being a servant and who didn't, mm. and quickly she'd return the ones who, who didn't right. have any experience. So it was a bit of a turnover. Quite a turnover, okay. yeah. So there's three beds in here. This one's quite interesting. This one yeah, looks the quite one's... different to the other two. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is a um, ship's bed actually. Ah. So the, the wealthy had to furnish their own cabins. And uh, I mean, it's very, it's rare that these things survive, but when you find them in the, out in the field, you find that they're, you know, often sitting on verandas or s sitting in former servants' quarters. Mm. So, I mean, they get put to use. Mm. This, this one in particular is interesting because it's a a um, couch by day and and then a cot by night, so the sides, the sides on it stop you rolling out of bed. Ah, when you're and rolling if, in your ship. And then it's got this fantastic sprung mechanism, so Ooh. you know you're nice and comfortable as the ship's pitching and turning. Ah, yeah. never seen that before. Mm. Yeah, it's quite a it's quite a rare thing. And the the colours in here are they all? Is this all newly? Painted. Yeah, it is newly painted, mm. so it's been put back into its original paint schemes based on the scrapes here. Mm -hmm. And this type of paint is called a stemper, so it's, it's whiting with pigment added, so the earth pigment. Um, mm. So the convicts weren't being given, you know, the freshest, most beautiful colours to live with. Mm. You know, this was all about being serviceable. Mm. We can see out over to the courtyard, which I think we'll go out and have a look at a bit later on. Yeah. Um, so coming through here, so we came up the servant stairs, and I think the servants would have accessed the house mostly through this door. They wouldn't have gone up and down the main stair. And um, this is very Tasmanian, this door. Mm. Um, so the, this, this face of the door looks into Captain Haig's dressing room, so it's got moulded panels. Oh, yes. So, you know, nice and classical looking. And then, of course, they don't waste any um, mouldings on the side of the servants. So the panels have got no mouldings. Hmm. Interesting detail. It is, yeah. yeah. So I think they, um, they saved themselves about two shillings on mouldings, but gave the convicts a very strong message about Indeed. their station. Indeed. Mm. Yeah, this is Captain Haig's dressing room. So it's a fantastically light room it is to me it's a little bit creepy in that he would have been <laughs> able to 
surveil the um, the women working in the courtyard. Ah, okay. Yeah. And and presumably then an extraordinary view right down to the River Derwent. Absolutely, you can just yeah. see the bridge there now. Hmm. Hmm. In the garden. Yep. N nice room. It but is. As you say, you could definitely surveying up here, aren't you? You could. Yeah. 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 This is fantastic. Noon has got the most fantastic collection formed in the 1950s. And this is from the Meredith family at um, Swansea. And um, it's a, looks like a chest of drawers, uh, but of course it's a washstand. Um, and even has details like the, um, the mirror that slides up. Oh. And you can see the two wash basins were here. Yes. A big picture for the water. Yeah. So, and it's amazing in that it's even got um, a bidet down below. Oh my goodness! You would never, you would never imagine that looking at this piece of furniture. Mm. You wouldn't. Mm. Yeah, I mean another piece from the set. This looks like a lovely little chest of drawers, and Ooh. it opens to reveal oh. a chamber pot. Very it's clever. Mm. Ingenious. So Narin has got quite a big collection of furniture and It does, clothes. yeah. Mm. It's, yeah, mm. it's an amazing collection. Mm. So it was formed in the 1950s, from the 1950s mm -hmm. onwards. And the collection still continues to grow. I mean, we've got something very significant about to into the collection now. Um, and Narina was basically doing, tes telling the story, Tasmania's social history mm. from the 50s, and that was well before Tasmania, the Tasmania Museum and Art Gallery had a history um, department which was formed in the 1980s. So great things came to Narina quite early on. And the, and the collections stay separate from those at Tasmania Museum Art Gallery? Yeah, yeah, it's a separate collection. Yeah. It's owned by the community organisation that runs Narina. So there's a, a memorandum of understanding between TMAG and Narina Heritage Museum Incorporated for the running of the museum. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So where are we going now? Um, well, I think we'll go back down the main stairs okay. where the convicts would never have gone. Indeed. And we might just um, try out the servants' bells. Oh, oh yes. Mm. Are they new as well? I mean, not new as in, but they've been um, reconditioned? Or? They have, yeah. yeah mm. Mm. It's a beautiful staircase, isn't it? Bannister. Mm. Railing. Yeah, it is. This is probably the best room to try it out. Oh. This is a lovely, intimate room. Yes, um, it's a very full room, um, and that's because the collection has such riches. Mm. So we, mm. in this room, we put more on display rather than less. Yes, <laughs> yeah, and no, there's lots to look at. So, so where's the, the bell then? The bell's here. Oh, okay, and I can, I can Do the honours. Try it, okay. I'll just pull. Um, a good. Shut. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's a lovely sound. It is, yeah. And how many are there around the house? Uh, five bells altogether. Okay. Well, it rings for quite a long time. It does. Mm. It's quite insistent, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> quite insistent, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, most, most of the, the bell system had survived and we simply had to link it all up again. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can lead the way because I'm not quite sure where we're going. Mm. Well, I think we might just go out through the courtyard and just enjoy the sun. Sounds like a good idea. Okay. Down the stairs again. Ah. This is a beautifully sheltered area, isn't it? It is, yes. It's north facing, of course. Mm -hmm. They gave the, um, the convict women the best light, didn't they? <laughs> So mm. this is the, um, the servant's wing off the back of the house. So upstairs, the servant's bedrooms, mm -hmm. two bedrooms, then the kitchen, and then, then the scullery, which has become the staff office. Mm. And then on this side, um, this is the laundry wing. So there's a larder, which was effectively the house's refrigerator in that corner, and the laundry here. So the servants would have spent a lot of time out here. This is where a lot of work was done. I think yeah. so, yeah. Mm. Mm. And we saw from upstairs there's a garden over there the other is. side of the wall. Yeah. yeah, so let's wander out. Mm. Of 
very worn step. There is, mm, yeah. Many people have walked down that step. That's an extraordinarily large anchor. It is, yeah. As you can see, it was the anchor of the Catherine Shara, which was a ship that um, came all the way from England to the Channel and mm -hmm. um, a fire on, on board um, ignited gunpowder and it blew up in 1858. So, uh, Gosh. yeah, quite a tragedy. Mm. I mean, fires on board ship, you know, were totally fatal yes. to yes, awful. everyone. Mm. It's quite an object, isn't it? Yeah. And more gardening going on. More gardening, mm. yes. We've um, put back a kitchen garden on this site and um, we use this in connection with um, our education programming. Mm -hmm. And that's Francis um, sweeping. <laughs> so a fantastic group of volunteers keep the um, kitchen garden going. Yeah, that oh, looks wonderful. Yeah, Captain Haig had a huge kitchen garden in the 19th century. It was on the site of that gable-ended house mm -hmm. um, and no doubt he used that for provisioning his ships. Mm -hmm. um, but in the 1930s, the house was being run as a um, boarding house or a guest house. And the people who ran the guest house built the gable-ended house on the site of Captain Hay's kitchen garden. Mm -hmm. And they moved it into here. So we've re... We've re, re yeah. Reconstructed we've, it. Yes. Really? We, yes. Yeah, on yeah. that site. Wonderful. Well, Scott, um, there are so many stories, and I know we could talk much for much longer. Perhaps we can come back another time and, and see the rest of the, yes, the house the and other works that are continuing to happen here. I know you're very busy, but thank you so much for giving us such an interesting, quick insight into what happened here and part of a very important part of Hobart's history. So thank you very much. Tell me a little bit more about how people can visit and the tours that you have yes. on offer. Mm. So Narina's open Tuesday to Saturday, mm -hmm. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Mm. Uh, we've got a fantastic website. Yes. Again, another thing we developed during lockdown. Mm. So that's www.narina.com.au. Mm -hmm. And um, pop on board. There's all sorts of stories there. There's a fantastic uh, blog post about um, this being the land of the Muanina people and what we know of um, Bobby Knopwood, the Reverend Knopwood's mm. um, relationship with mm -hmm. Tasmania's First People. Uh, and lots of content continues to be added. So mm -hmm. by all means, look there. And of course, um, if you have a wedding or a corporate <laughs> event, <laughs> we've got this fantastic space for it. It is, it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And thank you, Veronica, for filming. Um, and we look forward to welcoming you to another Facebook tour next month. Thank you very much for watching.